Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Willie Henderson, a.k.a. Willionaire, real estate investor out here in Las Vegas. Want to shoot this quick video to let you know what a wholesale deal is and by the numbers, what it looks like. Who am I? I'm Willie Henderson. Like I said, based in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm a real estate investor, primarily wholesaler. And uh, just wanted to share some of the knowledge I have in, in regards to that space. I've uh, been doing this for about four years here in the Las Vegas area. Love it. Can't beat real estate. I'm glad I got into it. You can get into it too. No money down. You think you need money? You don't need a lot of money. Think you need a whole bunch of time? You don't need a whole bunch of time. I just crush those beliefs right there. But anyways, enough about me. Let's get started with uh, sharing what a wholesale deal is. All right. So what I made here, a little picture here called wholesale deal by the numbers. The numbers don't work. It's not a deal. The numbers have to work in order for it to be a good deal. Once you've been doing this for a while, getting your feet wet in the game, you'll start becoming more familiar with what numbers work, what numbers don't work. So in here, got an example of a property here. So this property, let's just say it's worth $200,000 ARV. Uh, ARV meaning after repair value. So that uh, is indicative of what properties sold right now uh, within the past uh, three, six months uh, to the current time, what a property similar to that uh, property of interest that you have um, in regards to that, what, what did they actually sell for? Not what the owner wants to list it at, not what the agent wants to list it at, what is it selling for actually right now? So we got that ARV, which is after repair value. Then for it to be a good wholesale deal, good starting point is to be 70% of what that ARV is. And this is for your end buyer. Uh, so your end buyer can actually make a profit. And uh, because obviously the in order for it to be a good deal, the end buyer who would end up reselling the property at a later date would have to make a profit off of this deal. So you wanna make sure you account for at least 30%, which makes it 70% of the ARV. And what that 30% uh, entails is that it accounts for uh, the profit as well as the holding costs and the closing costs and recording fees. So the cost of what the property would take to record with the escrow company or title office, uh, as well as uh, what the in, in, in buyer is going to uh, make potentially off profit, as well as the holding cost. So since the property is not being lived in by anybody, it's not being occupied. And during this rehab remodel phase, you the property still is gonna cost money. So you gotta cover those costs with this here. So that's what 70% of your ARV, that takes us to uh, $140,000. So $140,000, which is 70% of that ARV of 200,000. Then we take it into consideration the repairs. So repairs here, I just said 15,000 just being a rough estimate there. And that's gonna be, uh, let's say for example, interior paint, uh, as well as uh, uh, some flooring and minor repairs. Uh, meaning just like little things uh, uh, that don't require much to fix. You got uh, factoring in for your, for your repair costs here. So we got uh, the 200,000, 70% of that ARV, which is going to be 140,000. Then we take into consideration the repairs, which we calculated at about 15,000. And then we factor in your fee. This is going to be your favorite number. 
So in this case, I just made it 5,000. That's a good modest uh, wholesale fee there. It can be uh, anywhere from 5,000, 2,500, 10,000, 15,000 and up. Uh, you structure the deal right, you can make a whole lot of money doing these wholesale deals. So we're taking into consideration your wholesale fee, uh, which is uh, $5,000. Okay, so we're gonna take all those numbers we got there which uh, you'll be finding out in order to make this deal seem feasible. Got these numbers here. So once again, we're just doing a recap. We got a property that's worth $200,000 fixed up in retail value right now. Uh, you got the 70% of that, which is 140,000. And then we're taking 15%, I mean uh, 15,000 uh, dollars for the repair costs as well as your fee which would be five thousand dollars so what we have at the bottom here is a hundred and twenty thousand dollars or mao your mao i gotta sit down here is your maximum allowable offer so negotiating with sellers if you want to uh, assure that you're going to make money on this deal you want to always know what your MAO is uh, before you start negotiating. Uh, prior, to talk, uh, prior to talking to the seller, you can try to do your own due diligence, look up the address, look up the county website, uh, find out any property information that you can, and then you speak out to the seller. When you reach out to the seller, you wanna ask them various questions, build up a rapport with them, and see why they want to sell, as well as what repairs are needed. So they'll either tell you some or all of them if they're really good about uh, uh, getting the message across on what what is uh, wrong with their property, what's good about their property. And then you schedule an appointment, go out and take a look around the property with the seller, ask questions about each and every room, as well as the front yard and backyard if, if they had that and uh, take a look at the high ticket items as well, like hot water heater, uh, the air conditioning unit, which can be uh, in the backyard area or on the roof, uh, and things of that nature, things that if it was to go down, there'll be several thousands of dollars to uh, repair. And the roof as well, that can be a very inexpensive item. So we got our MAO here of 120,000. So you talk to the seller and say that, okay, in order for, the, for us to make this work, 120,000 would get this done for us. And you also explain to them, okay, we're taking into consideration the repairs, we're gonna be covering your closing costs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, try to make a, as good as impression as you can with the seller, and then more than likely they will take your offer all cash offer, I might add, uh, which is very appealing to uh, these motivated sellers. So make sure that it's an all cash offer. You did your numbers, you did your due diligence, you did your homework. Now we can proceed to the actual process here. So you want to get that property under contract with that seller. And then once you get that property under contract with the seller, you now control the property. You control the property having this piece of paper right here, which is the purchase and sale agreement. So you did your numbers, you came up with your MAO, the seller agrees to this offer that you made here, all cash. Now you got an executed contract. This is the first big step in this real estate wholesale deal right here. So after you get this executed contract signed right here, then you want to uh, get this assignment form, which I also have for available for a download, my own personal uh, assignment form, as well as the contracts that I use. Uh, but with this assignment form, this is what's gonna actually uh, get you paid from the end buyer. So this assignment form, you will sign and then you will get your end buyer to sign as well if they're interested in purchasing or you're able to flip this contract over to them for that fee. 
Um, so with the assignment form, you as a wholesaler will sign, as well as the end buyer will also sign a mutual agreement that uh, you're relinquishing your rights to this contract to that end buyer, and the buyer is accepting all responsibility. Uh, also, before this assignment contract is is uh, completed, the end buyer may want to see more information, more pictures and any other details about that property before they make that decision to take over that assignment form. So you want to make sure that while at the property, uh, before you get that executed contract signed, you want to make sure you take plenty of pictures, take plenty of video, and take down any notes that you can around the property, uh, things that you might, might feel that are important for the, your end buyer to know so they can have a good calculated estimate on making sure your numbers are right and then making a good purchase. So once you get that assignment form signed by you and the end buyer here, this is my end buyer man right here. <laughs> so you get that executed contract signed, then you get that uh, assignment form signed by you and your end buyer and then that paperwork is then taken to the escrow office or title company. So this is where the magic happens. This is where the uh, transaction all takes place. This is where the uh, end buyer would need to close successfully in the amount of days that you and the uh, seller agreed to on the purchase and sale agreement. And once this deal is closed, then you get that fee. You either get it wired uh, electronically to your uh, bank account, which uh, some investors do. And uh, me personally, I like going and picking up the check. There's nothing more special than going to the title company knowing that you got a nice fat check waiting on you. So uh, yeah, doing several deals, you'll become uh, very, uh, very, very happy to go on that drive to that title office and, and pick up that check. Or if you're a virtual investor, you like to do things out of state, then uh, obviously a check would get mailed or wired to you. Okay, so that in a nutshell is how you do a wholesale deal, how the whole process goes. My name is Willie Henderson, AKA Willionaire, AKA Will Estate. <laughs> Always looking to broaden the horizons and uh, teach people about real estate investing. You got any questions, go ahead and feel free to reach out. Okay, you guys take care.